domestic violence is yeah. the worst thing ever yeah. where we come from yeah, and how yeah, we yeah. grew up domestic violence is like it's a norm yes. yeah. and it baffles me yeah. how much that doesn't change yeah. you know when I go back to PE now and I see how it is it's like you know what if I could do something mm. I would want to change that yeah. to, make, to make guys realize that listen mm. it's not a norm now these kids grow up they and they grow that. up like that yeah, yeah. because it's a norm to them so that's the biggest thing for me that i would like to have an influence probably one day is going into households and just making just you know a guy should treat a woman with respect yeah, and with yeah. honor and especially yeah. in front of children yeah. hello everybody hello everybody everybody <laughs> We're back, we're back with another episode of the All Round SA podcast. If you thought the last episode was great, this one, ah, this one, ah, this one, ah, this one, this one is like top of the charts because we've got a man that is an absolute star in South African football. Uh, I shouldn't have said football because now it gives it away, but he, his intro alone is going to have to take uh, a couple of minutes of what we have <laughs> already stipulated for this episode. But he's, a, he's an absolute legend uh, of South African football. Uh, he started his career down in Galvandale, uh, born and bred in Kabecha. Uh, it's, nice, it's, nice it's nice to have somebody from, from Eastern Cape now. Oh, because we always, Cape Town. Yeah, I always week. have Cape Town people. <laughs> yeah, uh, Western Cape, Cape Town people. Uh, but shout out to Lala K. He was yeah. excellent on, the, on our last episode. Um, but this is a man who was born in Kabecha in because uh, I had to write it down. There's a lot of things and I might lose a couple of things in, in the process of this introduction. But He's born in Port in PE, uh, now Klebecha, in Galvandale. Started his youth career with Glenville Celtic, and you can butt in at any point where you want to correct, please. <laughs> uh, Galvandale Celtic um, then moved and packed his bags at the tender age of 15 years old uh, to go from Galvan in Klebecha, 1,000 kilometers to all the way to uh, Kempton Park in, uh, in Johannesburg, where he attended is one of the more famous graduates of what was then Transnet School of Excellence. Um, that's between 2000 and 2002. So uh, a lot of development happened there for him. Then got roped into Supersport United. He played a little bit for the youth side before being promoted to the first team. The first team, he won a lot of things. <laughs> like a lot of things. Like lots. Yeah. 101 appearances for Supersport United uh, in that first stint. And then went to Orlando Pirates, 87 appearances. As the Nyama Gengane, as I'm a Gebul, as a Gebul Umklaba, Jungsa Pezuli, yes. You guys uh, are good at it. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. Uh, came back to Supersport United on loan, then went to Vits, won more trophies, won more trophies uh, at, at Pirates and, of course, eventually wounded out his career at Chipper United back home. Mm. I guess that's a such that's a serendipitous, you know, it's very nice. Legendary way to finish. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure and please put your digital hands <laughs> together at home as loud as you can and here in venue for Dane Marcel Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now I now I can breathe. <laughs> what an intro! What an intro! Don't Unbelievable! Thanks, <laughs> yeah, guys. Thanks for for inviting me. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, yeah looking forward to some good, creating some good content. It's called, called <laughs> content. Yeah, content. Yeah, we're creating please, content. Please, please, please. <laughs> um, Dane, let me kick it off though, because yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've mentioned about you going from Glenville Celtic to um, School of Excellence, which we'll touch on a little bit, and then. All the trophies that you won. I think I was sitting at home and I was counting uh, 14 in total. Yeah, I think it's... F if I count prop... Uh, well, at Supersport when I started, yes. I wasn't part of the squad. So we won the John SA Terry. Super 8 as well. Yes. So it's 15 actually. 15. Jo it's yeah. a John Terry 15. award. Yes. <laughs> but my brother will... My brother has got... Uh, He's got all the stats. Exact stats. Yeah, he says 16. Okay. Yeah. So if I count... Uh, it, when I count with him, it's 16. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember the SAA, Super 8 was the one where yes. I had joined the first team. Mm. Wasn't part of the playing squad. Yes. But I was down in Durban on the podium, the medalist still at home. So, mm. 
That, that's um, in that's in 2004. I think it, 2004. Yeah, yes, yeah, against yeah. Chiefs in it was at um, uh, what's the stadium of the Sharks? Um, uh, Kings, uh, Kings, Kings, Kings Park, Park Stadium. Yeah, yeah Kings, Kings Park, Park Stadium. Yeah. Uh, where we won. Uh, I was part of the squad, mm. the team, the entire uh, team trophy, that went Super Sport. That's a trophy. That's a trophy. Yeah, when Super Sport lifted it, you know, it's under your belt. Yeah, yeah. I've got the medal. Like I'm saying, for the medal. If you have a medal, then you you're okay. You know. Dan, I want to kick it off in this fashion. I mean, we, we, we sit here and we often talk about the success of sportsmen and women and, and what have they, they've achieved. But before all of that, there's Dane Clayt uh, that grew up in Galvindale. Um, and, and a lot of um, people that grew up in segregated areas in South Africa have to have some sort of navigation skills to be able to navigate the things that happen in those segregated areas. What was life like for Dane Clayt growing up in Galvinda? Uh, I, think, I, think, I think I had the most fun. Yeah. I think it was the most fun playing in the street, cricket, soccer, rugby, tennis. When it's Wimbledon, you're outside. Yeah. You're painting the street yeah. there with the lines yeah. and the, the tennis court, and we're playing tennis, you know, with the, with the planks. Yeah. You know, you go cut the, get the saw, and then you're busy there doing stuff. And you, you know, so growing up, it's a pretty ordinary. Yeah. You know, like every other kid. There's a lot of kids I grew up with uh, that was talented, yeah. like me. Mm -hmm. Because we would be in the school, I would jump the fence over. I used to stay in the road uh, of the schoolyard. Yeah. You know, so my primary school, Urfan Duncan Primary. And I would just, we would just jump over the fence and go and play there because the cars must now obviously yes. is riding in the road. Now we go in the schoolyard. Yeah. But then sometimes the police would come. come <laughs> <laughs> we're not supposed to be we're playing in the schoolyard, you know? Yeah. But I mean, that's the most convenient yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, it's the most convenient playground, you know? Yeah. It, there's, uh, there's netball courts down there. There's a rugby field, there's soccer goals. Yeah. So you want to be there in that space all the time, you know? And I was fortunate enough to grow up in the environment I did with, with, with what I had, you yes. know, when the police would come, we'll, we'll just change you it duck. over to, we'll just duck and we'll play in the, now we'll play in the street, you know, but I think to a certain extent, the police also were like, ah, oh, we're just driving here just to scare them. We're not going to do anything <laughs> yeah, to them, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, because we were harmless. Yes. I mean, we were literally just, just, kids, just yeah, you're not allowed to be in the schoolyard after, after school yeah. or whatever. But I mean, you know, it was a safe space to yeah. be in. It's yeah. a very, very safe space to be in. And if I can, probably encourage schools today, I would say to them, listen, open up the school, just make sure that nobody goes where the classroom yes, is, yeah, but yeah. the playgrounds must be ac accessible 24-7. Yeah, yeah. you know? um, I mean, we were speaking before we came in, yeah, I mean, you, you met up with Russell Domingo, obviously at yeah. the Wanderers, so yeah. it's a cricket stadium, <laughs> uh, Russell Domingo um, and Garner Garner, crew, yeah. I mean, those are the people that you, you would have grown around yes, um, yes. in Galvin. And we were speaking just before we, we started recording about some of the, the sportsmen and women that Galvin has been able to produce over the years, yourself, Garnet, um, Ashwell Prince, yes. Alviro Peterson. There's so many people that came from your part of the, 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 the world that became sort of household names in South African sport. Was that also something that you know, sort of grew up in terms of the culture of sporting culture in Galvin that motivated you to become Dane Clay to that footballer that you were? Yeah, I think there's a lot of, you know, meeting Garnet and Russell, yeah, it's, it's, it's always nice to see them. You know, uh, they were always in that type of spaces. And they will tell you, there's one, there's one person, uh, Gordon Kemp. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gordon Kemp, he's, he, he was a teacher at the primary school. Yeah. And he uh, uh, would let me play you play in the street and whatever, and then yeah. you come into school and you start your career, soccer and cricket. At, at that time, you're very oblivious. You're yeah. 80, I'm eight years old. You know, all you really want to do is play. But now to go down to the Galvindale grounds, yeah. and, you know, you're not used to those things. You're not used to a structured environment. Yes. And yes. Someone saying, you playing, you playing, you playing, you sitting on the bench. Yeah. You're not used to that. Yeah. It's everybody comes, yeah. you get into Just school, whether it's 18 versus 18 or 20 versus <laughs> 20, whoever comes just joins that team. Yes. Whoever comes just joins that team. Yeah. So... You know, I kind of, I kind of prefer to just stay in the street and play in the streets. Yeah. You know, but when I got to school the Monday, I I skipped the one match the the next week, the Saturday. I skipped the match and I got to school and I got called uh, out of class. Yes. First thing, it's first period. Great, I mean, where I'm, are you? I'm in grade three. <laughs> you know, well that time they called it standard one. Yes, uh, yes. You know, um, and I get called. No, Mr. Kemp wants to see you. Yeah. One one of his uh, learners in his class ca came to come and call me out of class. Mm. Teacher let me go, I, I get there. The first thing he says to me, where was I on Saturday? Why didn't I go play? 
And I was like, I didn't even have an answer. Yeah. <laughs> because the reason why I didn't play, because I wanted to play at home. Yes. I didn't want to go play there. Did you tell him the reason though? You know? You, like, no, I just, I was just like, I was just like, now I was playing here in the schoolyard. Yeah. And he's like, well, I never ever want to see you playing in the school on a Saturday again. Yeah. <laughs> just because, man, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, you need to go and play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You go to training and you go and play. Yeah. You play for the school, you play for, and you, and you go play weekends. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you have someone like that, that comes in and just, kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. nips it in the bud immediately mm. and says to listen, that playing there is not equivalent to that. Yeah. That there is going to give you more than what yeah. the street is going to give you. Yeah. Uh, you over, you can still play in the street, but when it's time to go play there, you go play there. Yeah. Because after that, you go back home and you go play. That's what I used to do. Yeah. So you go, it's an hour. You start, the game starts <coughs> nine o'clock. By 10 o'clock, half past 10, you can be home. But I was one of the people that would, would stay and watch the first team as well. So the under 10 game would yes. be nine o'clock. The first team would kick off at half past three and I'd go home half past five, you know, because if you keep ball the whole day there and you watch football, the whole day, interested, you're just interested in football yeah. the entire time, yeah. you know, but coupled with that was, was cricket as well. So while you at the soccer field there, the cricket nets is there, yeah. I'll find guys in there and I'll throw me in there, mm. you know, bowling to them, mm. they'll pad me up, I'll, yeah. they'll throw, get a few throw downs for me you know, yeah. and I'll bat and those type of things, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very priceless and it's very yeah. rare yeah. Uh, uh, these days. Yeah. yeah. I think just in your brief start there i mean i can hear a lot of um you know sports that you've played and um i mean i just quickly talking about your background because i mean your brother as well is also involved in the sport yeah. I mean, where does that come from was it just the area that you grew in where it's naturally just led led you guys towards the sports that you you played yeah i think i think sports in general i think is i think majority of people um, love sport mm. there's a very few you still find people ah, i don't know soccer I don't, I don't know, where do you live you live under a rock yeah yeah you know people that there's no interest in sport yeah. and there's interest in the most successful people are probably people that's business sport yes business yeah. sport, yes business sport. Yes. you very rarely Balance. find someone that's mm. very very successful yeah. that only focus and says ah, i don't know anything about cricket mm. i don't know anything yeah, about yeah. soccer mm. i don't know anything about rugby so so sports is a very very I think critical thing in our country especially yeah. you know and, and it brings a lot of hope uh, you can have dreams you know some people dream of being a doctor some yeah. people dream of being a teacher some people dream of being a lawyer you know you are able and while you dream of being all those type of things like when i grew up i was in school you yeah. go to school they ask you what do you want to be when you grow up ah you know what fireman yeah. policeman <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know when yeah, you're young at that age you yeah. know your mind is not fixated on i want to become a soccer player whereas yeah. today from that age, six, yeah. seven, eight, when these boys go to school yeah, and you ask them, know. some of them already say, I want to be the next A.B. De Villiers. Yeah. I want to be the next Benny McCarthy. Yes, yes. I want to be the next uh, Sia Kulisi. Yeah. You know, so they already, there's, uh, that's how much food, uh, that's how much sport in general yeah. has really contributed to, to the country. So it's just a thing of, uh, I think sports really uh, gives you a different perspective. Mm. You know, you'll become a doctor, but yeah. you'll try to become a sportsman sports before that. Before that yeah. 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 I'm fascinated, though. I mean, he's rattled through a few names, um, players, people that have come through Galvindale um, mm. that have, I mean, from cricket, soccer, all walks of life. And, I mean, we mentioned Langa as well. Of, yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. We're talking about, you know, uh, the actors, actresses, yeah. rugby players, yeah. soccer players. And that kind of... Um, Helps you in a way to say, actually, that can be done if I'm seeing Umdo Pumagalanga, someone yeah. who comes from Langa. Comes from, how much of that as well ha is, is important to, to have someone in, within your area um, you can relate to that can maybe help you to, to look up to? No, 100%. I think, I, I think a, lo a lot of that, like Ghana's name was ahead of me, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Alvira was ahead of me. Ashwell Prince was ahead of me. Uh, so, I mean, I used to watch Alden Baptiste. Yeah, yeah, play for yeah, 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 yeah. In the West Indian, playing yes. for for club the local cricket there, club yeah. cricket. There, he's, he's, he chose Calvin Dell, mm. you know. So I mean, those were inspirational figures uh, to me. And my mom, actually, the story of me of, of my love for cricket is mm. my mom. My mom used to work in the old school at in George's Park. Oh, when wow. They used to do the numbers. Yeah. 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 So my mom, when she when she I think she was in matric, yeah. uh, she started working in the uh, uh, at, on the scoreboard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know during the school days yeah. and she kept score yeah. she used to do the score on the on the on the books and yeah. whatever so so that's where the love for cricket really really came so i used to go with her to st george's park to watch eastern province play yeah, yeah. you know there's a couple of vessels yes. Tim Shaw, yeah. 
you know those are the type of Shafiq pension edges we're talking about pension yeah, edges yeah. now you know those that serious yeah. you know Safik Abrams Safik yeah. also came yes, from Galvanel yes, yes. you know and I mean those are the type of people and you tell to yourself ah you know what I actually want to play there I go to St. George's yeah. Park all the time and I want to play there you know but my love was for soccer was just well, even more but it's very very important to have role models from within mm. and make them believe that you know as much as there's gangsterism as much as there's drugs as mm. much as alcohol abuse mm. as much as there's wrong things uh, domestic violence is yeah. the worst thing ever yeah. where we come from yeah. and how yeah, we yeah. grew up domestic violence is like it's a norm yes. yeah. and it baffles me yeah. how much that doesn't change yeah. you know when I go back to PE now and I see how it is it's like you know what if I could do something mm. I would want to change that yeah. to, make, to make guys realize that listen it's not a norm now these kids grow up they and they grow that. up like that yeah, yeah. because it's a norm to them so that's the biggest thing for me that i would like to have an influence probably one day is going into households and just making just you know a guy should treat a woman with respect yeah. and with yeah. honor and especially yeah. in front of children yeah, yeah you know more so in front of children so yeah. so that was my biggest thing and with my kids and and like like you know with my wife it's like i would never ever even Income. raise my voice yeah, yeah. When the kids is here because mm. i don't want them to have that perception yeah ever to think that it's okay yeah. to do something like that so, so for me that's one of the biggest things that that i would love yeah. to change and, and have an influence on is is is, is the gender-based violence mm. within yeah. our communities mm. we talk about celebrities and they're in the newspapers and they're well off and mm. they you know we're talking about poverty stricken areas now we it's a norm yeah you know, and, yeah. and, and it's not right that it should be a norm. You know, it shouldn't be uh, everybody just frowns upon it and no one does anything yeah. because everybody's just like, oh, well, that's how it is. Yeah. You know, it we can't be, be like saying that. domestic violence. We cannot be saying that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that must change. Yeah. You left Galvin, um, Galvin High and, 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 and PE at a very young age. I mean, 15. Mm. We were speaking to Lyle last week and he was saying he also left um, Athlone as a as a very young boy, um, yeah. had to grow up very quickly. Um, you left at fifteen to go to School of Excellence. Yeah. School of Excellence at that time was 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 really well backed, well managed. Um, there were a lot of coaches uh, that yeah. were that that started off their o their own you know careers and trajectories there. The experience of leaving home at that young age and getting to uh, an institution like School of Excellence, which has produced a lot of, of stars, not only for the premiership in South Africa, but for Bafana Bafana eventually. Um, how was that transition for Dane Clayton moving from PE to Johannesburg at a young age and just focusing solely on making this dream of being a footballer into a reality? Yeah, yeah it was, you know, when I left PE at that age, I was so much uncertainty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you going so far? In my own head, <laughs> you know, like it is far. <laughs> what fourteen-year-old leaves home? Yeah. You know, and I was a granny's boy. Yeah, uh, I was very, very. I lived with my granny a lot. My mm. mother worked, obviously. Mm. My granny stayed at home, so my granny looked after me, mm. uh, well, all my life until yeah. she passed away yeah. uh, when I matriculated. Yeah. So it was, yeah, guys, it was difficult. I, I, I always say today. I say I go through difficult times with the coaching and yeah, in my career, yeah. and, but there's none. I don't think is anything is going <laughs> to be as compare difficult. It. I don't think is anything is going to be as difficult as leaving home at that age to mm. a boarding school. Yeah, uh, with different cultures, different languages, yeah, yeah, different, yeah. different schooling, yeah. different province. Mm. You know, I'm not used to the thunderstorms. <laughs> you know, leaving, <laughs> leaving the beach, <laughs> leaving the beach, <laughs> leaving the beach, man. Leaving the George, leaving the George's Park. You know, <laughs> You know more of those things, you know. Yeah. But but I think it was it was the first year was really difficult. And yeah. There was a lot of times during it first year that I wanted to give up mm. and I just wanted to go back home, uh, cry myself to sleep, call my mom, nice. call my granny, and all they did was just encourage me. Just give it till the end of year. Mm. Just give it till the end of year. Just mm. give it till the end of year. You know, end of year came and they like give it another go. Give it another mm. go. And the second year really flourished. Okay. You know, uh, we played the KFC tournament. Mm. We started traveling to the Milk Cup. We started going to the USA, bail tournament. Yes. And all of a sudden, the football is now taking over. Coupled with school, obviously. I yeah. uh, was pretty decent with my, with my grades at school. I tried to keep it between 60 and 80% to try and keep it on that level. You yeah. know, my level has always been, if I get 70%, okay, I'm satisfied. Yeah. You know, I don't have to be the top student yeah, yeah. because I think my football is yeah. also very important <laughs> to me. So I don't want to be the top student. Yeah. I don't have to have 90% and 80%. Yes. 
you know, but if I can have 70% and yeah, 75% okay. and I can stay in that level there, then I can focus more on this side. Yeah. You know, so that was really the second year really uh, put things into perspective uh, for me. Uh, but I can gladly say that first year was the year that said to me, you're going to go out in life and I can use that now and say, you know what, if, if things get difficult, it's never ever going to be as difficult as that. Yeah. And, uh, I, and if I could overcome that, yeah, then anything. I could probably overcome anything yeah. uh, in, in future. I, I want you to please give us some depth in that first year. Yeah. Because I think as a 14-year-old, like you've mentioned all the changes that happened around your life, but like what was keeping you going to obviously maintain that first year and, and end up being successful in the years after? The football. I think the football was the one thing that was the... The saving grace. Yeah. The amount of times we trained on a Tuesday and Thursday, we trained twice. Mm. We go to school. Uh, school starts quarter past seven. Uh, ten o'clock the bell rings. You go out quarter past ten. You're on the field. You're training for an hour, and you're specifically only doing passing. It's only ball master. Yeah. So passing with the outside, passing with the inside. Every Tuesday and Thursday in the mornings, that was a session about you and a partner, and you're gonna pass to each other. Yeah. For one hour straight. Yeah. You, you do that. Okay. We have breaks in between. Mm. But I mean, it's outside part, it's driving the ball, it's long pass, it's short pass, it's, you know, it's a two touch, it's passing on the, on the volley, yeah. juggling the ball and passing the ball, you know. So, so, th so that was the fun part of it. Yeah. And what kept me going and like, ah, if you want to be a footballer, you got to sacrifice. If you want to be a footballer, you got to sacrifice. And, and, and you start mentally, it, it goes mentally. Yeah. It goes in your mind, what well, goes in your mind, I want to go home, it's nice at home there. I can eat whenever I want to yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. There's only three meals a day. If you if you if you hungry ten o'clock at night, you must yeah. sleep. You can't <laughs> go into the kitchen, put on the kettle, make yeah. your peanut butter and coffee bread. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. You don't have it luxuries over there, you know. Um, but uh, that first year, really, at that time, mm. I had no clue at all what that mm. would mean for me and how I would speak about it today. Yeah, mm. you know, because I went through with that back then, uh, but it was really, really difficult and mentally. Uh, did a lot you know a lot of times I cried myself to sleep mm. because you, you miss home I miss my granny I miss yeah. my friends I miss I missed what I was used to yes but for me to have what I have today mm. that That's, had to happen yeah you know yeah. because then otherwise I would have just ended up like everybody else that stayed behind yes you know yeah. and 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 even if I did stay behind I can proudly say that I would probably never have have gone into the wrong things because yeah. I would have probably gone, I was very, very good at accounting. Mm. At Galvin I, the first year I got 100% in accounting. <laughs> the second year I got 96%, I got special awards <laughs> both years <laughs> in accounting. So obviously my mind was already, and I really just enjoyed it. Yeah. I was never exposed to accounting. I got to accounting and I paid attention and I thought, ah, this is something I love. Yeah. You know, and when you love something, naturally you'll do yeah, well in yeah. it. You know, so when I went to the School of Excellence as well, accounting as well, I would sit sometimes when I feel really sad and really, Lonely, I would go sit with my with my accounting books for three, four hours and just go to do everything. So mm. you do the journals. Yeah. The journals is the ledger. Mm -hmm. From the ledger is the income statement. Yes. The income statement is the balance yes. sheet. Yes. And you know what the you know what the nice my books. And you know what the nice part is? Now you sit there for three hours, you sit there for three hours. Uh, this thing balances. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> that has to be one of the ah. best meetings. Oh, God, I'm <laughs> right, Tomorrow I put my books away. Tomorrow I go to school. You're in class, you do your homework. Yeah, man, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> this thing balances, man. <laughs> Dave, I, so, was, I was actually reading somewhere uh, that you said last year that it's something that you still want to pursue. Do. Like, yeah. you still want to pursue that. Yeah. Like, is it something that you, you, uh, you, you're, in, you're in you know process of trying to finish uh, yeah i think degree? yeah i think i think i'm i'm into the coaching now you know and, <laughs> yeah. and i really want to do yeah. you know look what's going to benefit me is is, is is doing sports science yeah you know i don't think accounting is going to benefit me in my career okay you know accounting in its own it's, it's its own career yeah. yeah you can't distinguish i can't be a, a soccer coach and an accountant yes mm. That's not going to work. Mm. You know, I, I got to do one or the other. Mm. Yeah. You know, whereas if you go and study sports science and you get your degree, it helps you coaching psycho psychology, yes. yeah. how to work with players, yes. how to improve the players, how to improve your mind. Yeah. You know, so it's got, it's got to be, I really thought about doing the accounting thing, but it's going to take too much effort and too much yeah. time away from mm. what I actually can. Whereas with, if I go sports science, mm. for example, then that helps me in coaching because part of the sports science syllabus you get uh, UEFA 
pro. Yes. Okay. You know, and she go like uh, I spoke to Robbie P. Yes. Robbie P is the other one from. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. Robbie P. I spoke to Robbie P while he was doing his masters. Mm. Uh, I think was his masters. His masters. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He actually spoke to me and says like, ah, oh, one of the subjects is UEFA Pro license, mm. and he just sent me all the material of the UEFA Pro license. So. Nice. I'm busy with my, uh, I'm on part two of the A license. I must still go and do the pro license, okay. but I've got a head start already because mm-hmm. I know exactly what it's, what about, it's about when yeah. I get there. Okay. You know, and this is a guy that's from Galvanel yeah. that said me, that said to me, hey, I'm busy here in England. Yeah, completely but different I think studying over yeah, here. But, this but, but I think well, this yeah. can benefit yeah. you. And he's a coach and yeah. I'm a coach. And yeah. the camaraderie amongst each other is just so fantastic. You saw how happy Garnet was when yeah. I walked yeah. in, how happy Ras was when I walked in and vice versa. Yeah. When I see these guys, it's just like, ah. Yeah. This is my people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just like goes like, ah, oh, this is my people. This is where it started all for us. For us all, you know. So, so yeah, I, I don't think the accounting thing is really um, kind of a passion has died down for me. Okay. Uh, n- knowing that I need to go forward in my coaching career. Yeah, yeah. And what is going to benefit me? I don't think the accounting okay. is really going to yeah. benefit me. Makes but sense. the sports science definitely. That's a degree that I would would is it, would want to enroll. Yeah. You know, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Also, I talked. Talk to us about the importance of that phase of, I mean, the school of excellence mm. in South Africa back then. It was a massive thing, yep. yeah. and and a lot of players have come through that. And yeah. you you mentioned the importance of, I mean, you you lived a well balanced life, yeah. the academic side, and all the other stuff that you. Where are we when it comes to that? I mean, yeah. a lot of your type of players came through that, and it seems like it's something that. Yeah. Now mm. it's more as it most of the clubs now have, have yeah, taken yeah, the on yeah, their yeah, own, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and obviously we kind of kind of moved away now from from that um, that structure. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Pienaar came. Stephen Pienaar yeah, yeah, came there. Yeah, yeah. Farouk yeah. Khan yes. yes. started yeah. and he was Kevin, also Kevin, Kevin Johnson. Johnson yeah. yeah, he was one of the guys that recruited me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so so because Mandla Mazibuko, the late coach Mandla yes. Mazibuko, he was he was I'm probably <laughs> coaching because of him now. <laughs> he had a big influence on yeah. me. Uh, at the school, I spent the most time coached by him yes. at the School of Excellence. And then my final year, I was coached by Coach Sam and Bata. Yes. He's at Sundowns. Yes, at Sundowns. You know, right. so I got to work with the two coaches that I feel, and Coach Kevin Johnson as mm-hmm. well. I got to work with the, with the best coaches that Africa could have had at yep. the time yep. in development. Yep. Mm. And I've got a big, big, big passion for, for development. Mm. Um, it needs a reshuffle, a big reshuffle is needed. Uh, in, in, in grassroots but the school of excellence lost its way yeah. when I was there it was still it was still going but it was busy losing its way mm. you know Coach Sam started leaving Coach Mandla left I was fortunate enough <laughs> to have all of them when while yeah. I was still there yeah. Yeah. I matriculated in 2002 Coach Sam left in Coach Sam that was Coach Sam's last year Coach yeah. Sam and Bata left in 2002 Coach Mandla kept going he kept we kept in contact we spoke so many times so many times he said to me ah, he can't leave because things is not that good yes. and he doesn't want to leave it like that. Yes. So we kept on trying every every year and every mm. year and every year. And the more the school had him there, the more it could go on. Yes. You know, until eventually um, Sundowns took Coach Mandla and uh, he started working for the junior national teams, mm. deservingly so. Yes. You know, everybody needs progression. <laughs> yes. You know, so I was I was hoping that they would coach in the in the PS, at the highest level one day mm. because they're that type of coaches. Uh, but their passion and their desire was was just for development was mm. so unbelievable. You know that I've I've got a lot of that in me. Uh, I love the development spaces. I I enjoy working in development spaces yeah. more than what I enjoy in the professional ranks. To yeah. be honest with you guys, yeah. and uh, I have to be honest with myself sometimes. Uh, a lot of times I think when when I was coaching Chipper, for example, yeah. I was at the DDC team. Yes. I was flourishing there. Yes. You know, and then I got offered the job probably four or five times and I declined it because I thought I wasn't ready yeah. and, and, I, and everybody knows what happens there yeah. not to go into it too much <laughs> yes, yes. you know and so you know where, where you're going into yeah. till eventually I decided you know what actually I've worked in this place I'm complaining that these players don't get opportunities let me take that job I'm going to take that job not for me I'm going to take this job to push these boys to get into the PSL yeah. you know these boys that I'm working at this key level mm-hmm. are, and they're from P they're homegrown yeah. boys yes. let me put them into, into, into the first team I did that uh, against Pirates. They uh, two, I made two substitutions. Yes. The two that came in, yes. the one made the corner, the one kicked the corner, and we scored a goal. You know, and that moment and that celebration mm. was not because I've scored against Pirates yeah. and I'm winning one zero against Pirates. I love Pirates. I, yeah. I'm a Pirate supporter. Yeah. Mm. I've always supported Pirates. Yeah. I I celebrated the way I did that game because of the work that was put in and how this thing unfolded. Mm. And that said to me. Oh, Man, 
this development thing is really it, eh? Yeah. The way the corner happened, yeah. how we kicked the corner, who the who scored, the, the person who scored the goal was not paid for three months. Mm. Oh. He, he didn't want to travel the Friday. Yeah. We playing the Sunday. I had to pick up the phone and make a few calls and say, hey, why is this guy not? And he's from Tanzania, yeah. you know. And he said to me, there's nothing at home. And I was like, ah. Oh. And then the goal came. My two boys from Madiski made the corner. And then this boy that we've been fighting for, he got paid the Sunday morning of the game and he scored the goal. Yeah. So all that emotion mm, yeah. was not because yeah. Chippa scored a goal against, it's not even about Chippa. Mm. It's not even about, it's about that boy that scored the goal. And these boys that the work we've put in, in PE uh, on, uh, on days where we didn't even have a ground to train. Yes. We'd have to find a little patch over there and we would train. And those are things that those people have no idea yeah. about. And I never complained about yeah. it. You know, so when you when you go there, you take the first team and you play against Sundowns, and then Sundowns hasn't lost a game in how many times? And then <laughs> like people expect years. people expect a young coach like yeah. me yeah. to compete on that level already. Yeah. When I've never, when I've never, when I've never coached at this level, yeah. it's my first time coaching at this. Level. So where's the understanding of the game? Yes. You know, so the problem is there's no understanding of the game, yeah. and there's no understanding of how development works. I come from a development background. Yeah. I I did not miss one step. Yep. And I, kn I understand it, and I've studied it, yeah. and I've learned. And in, even today, I'm very into development things. I will yeah. watch documentaries on how academies work yep. abroad. Because I think, ultimately, for me to satisfy myself and to probably uh, flourish, I'm going to have to go that way. Yeah. I'm going to have to go to Europe. I'm going to have to go rather to Saudi Arabia. I have to go yeah. to Dubai because people in Africa don't take development seriously. They're yeah. not willing to invest. They're not willing to invest, number one. Yeah. Number two, they don't know how to do it. Number three, it's who you know. Yeah. And it's not about the talent. It's yes. about, oh, that one is a politician. He's got tenders. Yeah. Uh, bring his son. His son can't trap a ball. Yeah. But his son must be incorporated. In the team. That's yeah. the problems we have now. And with the School of Excellence, if I can go back to School of Excellence, is when Safa took over, that's when everything crumbled. Mm. You know, the school was on the verge, transit uh, supported the yes. investment. You know, and, and it all depends on the people that's going to run the thing. Mm. You know, so there's money. Yes. But now the money is being mismanaged. You know, we never had a social life at the school. There was, there was, there was. Set program. There was, a, there should be, should have been a set program. Mm. So we would go to Mpumalanga for an excursion for a weekend to go and see God's window. That's beautiful, brilliant. Yes. But that must be, that must be standard. Mm. It mustn't be once off. I did it once with the School of Excellence mm. in my three years that I was there. Mm. That's a social aspect of, of life. And your social life takes a hammering because every day you're there. You yeah. can't go out. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't go to the shop. It's like a little jail, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get out, and then you must go misbehave. And that's yeah. why most of the school of excellence players, uh, they end up misbehaving. Yeah, because, because, because the attacks. social elements, yeah. the social elements of 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 the develop our, our social development takes a big knock yeah. when you go there. Yeah. Because you don't do the things that the, the normal kids are doing on the outside. Yeah, yes. And okay, Building maybe a whole, it's a, a sacrifice. Being, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a sacrifice, but at least. You gotta go to the mall. You gotta be exposed yeah. to certain things. You gotta be able to make mistakes. You gotta you gotta experiment because that's how you learn. You love and you learn. Yeah. And some sometimes people get abused on things they shouldn't be getting abused on because they've got weak mentality. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the environment you're from. Yeah. yeah. It's your mentality. Yeah. And that's why I'm I'm very very big on mentality. And I've always said, the three years I spent there, yes, there was a lot of complaints about yep. the social life yep. and the food and the this and the that. But ultimately, it really made me mentally, it prepared me mentally. It made me mentally so, so strong. Like I, I can proudly say today that that first year, I don't think there's anything else in this world that it, it's going to be more difficult for me to, to, to overcome, handle, yeah. to overcome. Yeah. So whatever comes, whatever difficulties is going to come, uh, I'll just go back to that yeah. and say that was the most difficult part in my life. But I, I don't think uh, we take the development seriously. Yeah. I don't think the powers that be, yeah, yeah. you know, are taking development seriously because... Uh, if it comes from the head, from the top, but I can, yes. if it's taken seriously from the top, it falls right, down, right yeah. down. You know, so I think it's a big, the interprovincial tournaments used to play in, in Eastern Province, and, and because of the academies, I think that got taken away. Yeah. So we found shortcuts, yeah. basically. Now I'm saying, if we got all these academies, if we got all the boys in the academies, let's say, for example, I bet it's 16 PSL teams, uh, 16 academies, uh, probably a thousand contracts available in that space. Mm. What happens to the rest? 
Yeah. Where does Jerez go? Yeah. Yeah. You know, now the interprovincial is the, as that Eastern Province versus mm. Southern Gauteng yeah, versus yeah. Northern mm. Gauteng versus Pumalanga versus KZN versus. So you got the cream of the crop coming together. That's how I grew up in the game. Yeah. Under 14, I played the interprovincial. Under 17, I played the interprovincial. You know, and, 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 and that's where your national team would come from. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying, yes, there is academies, but it's not enough. Yeah. It's n- it will never ever be enough. Yeah. We we gotta get back. We gotta get back to interprovincial tournaments. Yeah. Safa's gotta come back and say, right guys, we back. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. But the p- p- problem is, there's no one there that, that's even looking at it. Yeah. There's no one that's talking about it. Mm. You know, you hear about the things, and I know Mr. Mr. Walter Steenbock is very very big on development. Yes. You know, he's very passionate about it. But one guy yeah. can never ever do it Change on his own. Thing, yeah. You know, it has to come from the leadership. The top, 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 top people they have yeah. to start taking development seriously. Yeah. Only then will our development and the school of excellence can be revived. You know, and that that can be a hub. Yeah. Mm. I want to I want to harp on a little bit on that, but on a slightly more different aspect and and, and personal development for for younger coaches like yourself. I mean, when I look now, um, I mean you've been you've coached at at, at the top division yourself, probably Mabuti Kanyeza. Uh, Musa Nyatama now at, at Swallows. Um, yeah. the, the, the younger coaches, the younger crop of coaches, Rulani probably um, as well, but, but the ones that have just come out of the changing room per se. How much development do you guys need in terms of your, yourselves um, tactically? Because mm. you obviously still see, maybe you still see the game as a player, not more yeah. so as a coach. Um, what kind of support do you think younger coaches like yourself, Mabudi, uh, Musa, need to really succeed and make that, that, that next step to the premiership? Because a lot of the complaints from fans and, 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 and clubs sometimes is that there's a rotation Recycling. Of, of coaches. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and also a, a big influence from coaches that are coming outside of South Africa. So yeah. what can we do to make sure that we empower our younger coaches yeah. to make those steps and take up leadership positions, head coach positions at our prof- uh, professional setups? I think, I think to come in there, I think I, I, I went to, uh, I'm doing my way for badges yeah. uh, through the Irish FA. Yeah. I had to travel to go and do it because there's no ready, there's no, we talk development, play development uh, from a young age. Then, then we talk coaches education yeah. from a young age. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. You know, you, your D license is, I we, we started a club Ibai FC um, mm. with uh, with uh, with my close uh, friend and coach uh, coach Bruce July was my mm. assistant coach at, at Chapman. We're very passionate. He's yeah. been Refrosler, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Sam Bongani uh, Sam Bongani Sam yeah. uh, Chunduana at, yeah. uh, at Richards Bay. Mm. You know the list is endless of the amount of talent that he produced. So he's the groundsman at at the Galvendale grounds. Mm. You know, and I used to go off season to go and train with him. Yeah. You know, and all these boys would be there, you know, so he would do that in his own time, not getting anything out of it, yeah. you know, and we talk about those type of things. Then we talk about when is their coaching, when is the coaching course? You ask anybody out there, any coach it's coaching in development or any club, coach, do you know when, uh, when, when the, uh, the, uh, the course, D license yeah. or C license? Nobody will know, but I know that the Irish FA every June, May, June, that's their period in the off season, that's their period where they educate coaches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So everybody enrolls for that time mm-hmm. to go there. Scottish FA does the same, you know, but we don't do that. You know, okay, now it's changing. Yeah. It's starting to come out more and more and but still it's not enough. That's <laughs> enough, yeah. You know, there's not there's not enough. They are saying now that uh, I'm saying I've got your FAB, I'm busy with part two of my FAA. There's a few things I need to submit. Probably in the next month or two, I'll have the A license. Mm. You know, I'll take my A license. I apply for a job in in Europe or Saudi Arabia, or I I, I apply for a job globally. Yeah, it's accepted. I do CAF. Are they gonna accept me? Yeah, no. Yeah. They're not gonna accept me, are they? Uh-uh. So so the reason I I was doing UEFA because I want to do world standard. Yes. It's a world standard. Mm. And, and that's just how it is. So if CAF can also become a world standard yes. mm. in relation to what UEFA is, then yep. we don't have to go away. Yes. Yeah, then yeah. we can do it here, but yeah, yeah. we don't have that luxury. Sure. And I can't get into to academies overseas if I'm going to go with CAF. Yes. Yes. Nobody's going to take me in Europe. Yes. You know, and, and maybe the ambition, if, even not even Europe, if you're going to go and coach in Japan, yeah. if you want to go and coach in Asia, yeah. wherever. Yeah. If you come with UEFA, they take you. 
Yeah. If you come with Kev, <laughs> we don't know this. Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it, I mean the recent examples that Benny McCarthy at Correct. Man United. Mm. I mean, Correct. Eric Ten Hag. I mean, yeah. there was a mention of had the interview and also he asked him to do a practical session yes. with him, yeah. you know and like you said if he didn't know i mean he did it in scotland as well as it or i think it was scotland scotland yeah. as well his badges so it shows yeah. you the, the, like you're saying which is as you just mentioned it's important that Correct. it's, and, it's and equivalent and to the world yes. standard and again i we speak about timing mm. uh, i speak to gavin a lot they're busy with doing the calf license now uh, and I mean, it's, it's, it's time consuming. It's a lot of time. Yeah. You go to the Irish FA, you go there for one week. We do practicals nonstop, all week. You tie it from nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock the night. You sure. 12 hours, you're doing practicals in one week. Mm. You've done everything. Now you go away, everything is online. And if you're stuck, if you want to do an assessment, you can call them, you can go back to one of them, the one, the one instructor. All is available. The one instructor's uh, Southampton's Academy, for yeah. example. So you can go and do your assessments there. You can go and do your sessions there with him. Oh, they yeah. allow you to do that, yeah. you know. And now over here, I, I speak to Gavin. It's phase one. It's this week. It's phase two. It's the other week. It's phase three. It's the other week. As a coach, don't have the like time. Gavin, yeah. you know, it's very, very time consuming. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Whereas in the off season, you've got, you've got time. six weeks of mm. off season, mm. and you focus mm. purely on that. And you go away, everything is online, it's in your mm. own time, it's, yes. it's, and they explain everything to the T, and mm. every, it's world standards, yeah. it's just, everything just makes more sense, mm. you know, to go and do it over there. Uh, I don't mind doing my calf license, I would love to do it because uh, I would learn different things in, yeah. a, diff in a different way, yeah. which is nice for me, which I would hope now in the off-season that there will be a chance for me to go in and, and, and do, for example, do a little bit of the B, of the calf B, uh, and then the cafe A as well, mm. you know, because mm. I'm already I'm already busy with my UEFA A license, mm. you know. But I would like to see how the, the B definitely. works, yeah. Yeah. and yes. how and then then jump onto the A then and get my qualification <laughs> because where I'm coaching now in the first division at La Marcia, you, in the new season I'm gonna need to have a, a cafe B license or cafe A license mm. to sit on the bench. Yeah, you know, never mind my UEFA license that <laughs> doesn't count now because does that not <laughs> count for you to be able to sit on the bench? Though? No, uh, well globally it counts, but. <laughs> Uh, apparently in South Africa it doesn't count. Everywhere else it does, but it's not probably going to count in, in Africa for yeah. now, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what it is about, uh, but, but, I, but I would imagine with, uh, with having guys like um, Mr. Patrice Motsepe yeah. in CAF, you know, I would, I would imagine the discussions would be like how do we align yes. the CAF licenses with the UEFA licenses yeah, yeah. and make it a whole yeah, holistic equivalent. thing, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, and maybe make it a FIFA license instead yeah. of a CAF license, instead of UEFA license, then go global standard yeah. and say it's a FIFA, yeah. it's a FIFA coaching license, yeah. you know. So that's where, 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 where the mind is, and, 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 and the, but the education part of the coaches over here, it lacks, it lacks even more then development. Mm. You don't have coaches as educated. How is that coach going to develop players? Yes. It's someone's dad. It's someone's. Yeah. You go to any grassroots football club mm. or whatever. Mm. It's mm. a dad that's coaching. And there's no. You go online and there's a lot of courses available. But mm. you do that course. You pay for that course from whatever institution, or whatever. And when you come into the professional range, you show. Oh, I've got this. Ah, oh, no. You need calf. We don't take that. Mm. When it's it's educa education is education. Mm. You know and and. and the fact that the education is not readily available for coaches over here, we should find a way to make it easier mm. yeah. for coaches to access the education to become a coach, yeah. whether it be under 10, whether it be under 12, whether it be yeah. senior team and whatever. And, and of course, as a player, you've always had, I have a bit of an advantage as a player yes. mm. because the, I, can get, I can get fast track. Already with UEFA, I could jump on the B. I didn't have to do C. I didn't have to do to do yeah. D because yeah. of because of yeah. how I was exposed in the yes. game. Yeah. So those ones are very basic ones. Yes. Of, this is how small-sided games work. Yeah. I've been doing it all my life. Yes. I've been playing small-sided games, so I know exactly how it works. Mm. So they say to you, ah, you're going to waste your time there, boy. Mm. You go, go immediately to that level yeah. there. That's your level. You need to start learning on this level yeah. so that you can get to that level quicker. Yeah. So you can get the pro license quicker. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and those are the type of things where... Whereas here, they're not going to allow you to bypass anything. Sure. You know, you're going to probably have to start with the, okay, they'll make exceptions now because you're already in, in PSR clubs, uh, in first division clubs. They made, they're making an exception yeah. to say, you guys go directly to B, mm -hmm. which is good. Mm -hmm. We can sit and talk development I, the whole time. Like, I think I'm very fascinated. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't want this discussion to end, yeah. but... We kind of have to move on, Dane, and and yep. and he's playing career. Yeah, <laughs> move he on, was but a player once, right? Move, move, move on, but move back yeah. uh, in a sense because 
you know, we spoke at the top of the show about, you know, win, win, you winning all of these trophies. I mean, you won three back-to-back -back titles with Supersport, and that was very much early in your, in your playing days. And then, yeah. and then came the, the, the double treble with, with, uh, with Pirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, a, a premiership title with Fitz and MTN titles in between and Nedbank in between. Yeah, yeah. Going back, and when you look at all of these titles, and, and I want to start with those three um, under Supersport in a row. That 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 was that was during a time when you, you were still very much younger mm. in your career. Um, we spoke with with Lyle here the other day, and he said he learned so much under you because you were roommates uh, yeah. during that time, and yeah. he was still you know sort of coming up in, into the first team. How fulfilling was though, were those first three for you and what did those first three do for your career? I, I think, yeah, you know, when, when you speak about Lyle, it's, it's, it's so nice just to see how he's, how he's developed and, and there's a lot of times that I, that I was watching him play, especially when he was at Sundowns yeah. and I'd be like, you know, I can see a lot of myself in yeah. that, yeah. you know, because of, because of the time I spent with him and, 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 at, and at that time I was... I was yeah, speaking, yeah. you know, so, but I had him under, under me and, and when I left Supersport, I actually told Gavin, listen, Lyle is ready now yeah. to play. Yeah. You know, I can go. There's no reason for me to, to stay, stay here. There's yeah, someone yeah. there already waiting in the wings, yeah. you know, because that was me also. I was like, ah, you know what, the next generation, as much as I'm coming up, I love for the next generation to also to experience keep, what yeah. I have, mm. you know, and even go a step further mm. if, if possible. <laughs> You know, but I think that 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 three years was look working with Coach Pizzo Mosimani from the onset was was really enlightening for me. The art to please Coach <laughs> <laughs> demands very very demanding, eh? very very demanding that um, a lot of players that I coach today will never ever cope uh, under the, under such guidance. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, they're very fickle today. Yes, uh, they're very. Uh, you can't tell them you can't be brutally honest with them yeah. they feel some type of way yeah. when generation Z you know they feel entitled yeah. you know uh, and then I ask myself but what have you achieved to feel in entitlement yes mm. because I've achieved everything I have and still I don't feel entitled mm. I still feel that the game does not owe me anything mm. you know I still feel that I owe the game everything yeah mm. You know, I still need to put in the effort for the game and to, for the next player and the next team and yeah. to help the team. And, yeah, to, yeah. and that's where my mind is all the time. Yeah. But, but that first, that when Gavin came, we struggled. Five games, two points. <laughs> Last on the lock. We, we went <laughs> on a boss barat. They took us away uh, the boss barat because change, people don't like change. Yes. Yeah. From Pizzo to Gavin is completely, completely different. different. Yeah. Different human beings, different coaches, different styles, mm. different ways yes. of coaching. So we were used to a set way. Mm. Mm. We used to Pizzo's way, even though it's a difficult way. We used to it. We we got into it, and now this man comes, and every, all of a sudden, we must change our ways. Yeah. You know, and then we all just we went on that first five games was a disaster because we want to play, we want to, we don't want to listen to the coach now. We don't want to change. Mm. We we blocked off. Yeah, we we were blocked off. <laughs> mm. And we went on a on a team on a team building exercise in Pretoria. We slept in the bush. We we had to make a hole and put an egg in there, put leaves <laughs> on the pee on the leaves and make the leaves moist and make a fire on top of that, so that tomorrow you, tomorrow morning when you come your egg is fry, your egg is boiled. You really? Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to walk with the log. Two guys walking yeah. with a log, with a big tree log for I think probably four or five kilometers until we decided. No way. No <laughs> Throw those logs down, guys. Right? <laughs> Can't do this. And as a collective, we decided we're stopping here. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going back. So that's team spirit, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But when you go through that thing, yeah. you're like, oh, it's so difficult. Yeah. We came back, we went 16 games unbeaten. Sure. And that's when we won the first league title. You know, so I think that, that first league title mm. obviously was, 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 was the most important one yeah. uh, because that set the tone and that gave us the experience and the belief and, and we improved after that. Would, the second one was easier. The yeah. third one was even easier, yeah. you know, but that first one was the most difficult one to get over that, yeah. that mentality of, ah, oh, this is a new coach. We need yeah. to change our ways. Yeah. We need to accept him for who he is, yeah. for how he wants to do things. And if we buy into it, we'll get success. And we did it. Yeah. And we got success. 
you know, he won the league three times. And then obviously I moved, I, I had to move from, from pi to Pirates. By yeah. then I was ready for Pirates. Yes. Because 22, 23, 24, you're winning league titles. Yeah. Now you're 25, you're in your peak. Yeah. yeah. You're ready to move. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready to move to something that's got more expectations. Yes. You know, because yes. I, I reached the ceiling at Supersport because what is my expectations at Supersport? What was left? Mm. All what was left was keep doing the same things. Yes. Keep winning the league. Keep yes. doing, mm. Now you go to Pirates, you got to please the amount of fans yeah. Yeah. you know and not uh, one trophy is not enough yeah. Yeah. one trophy is not enough there you got to compete on all fronts yeah. you know in every game you go and play there every game you must win mm. there's no not winning you, you, the, the worst thing at, at pirates was you lose a match <laughs> i don't go anywhere <laughs> i scored a, i scored an own goal in the derby my first derby <laughs> scored an own goal i to go there actually <laughs> you guys you scored an own goal in the derby but i was prepared from back then like i said to you mm. guys when i was 14 is scoring yeah. on goal in the derby more difficult than what I went through there? Yeah. Yeah. It can never be more difficult, but it's defining moments like that yep. that you decide that, you know what, <coughs> as much as I scored an own goal, I can't go anywhere for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, your wife says, hey, go to spa, I need, I need that. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know that guy there, that normally the security guy that's there. Abuse that guy me. is he's, he's, he's a big Pirates fan. <laughs> I'm not ready to face him. Yeah. One day I'll face him, but it's not too fresh. Today, yeah. It's too, too fresh. Soon. That man's heart. Yeah. I broke that man's heart. <laughs> There's no way yeah. I'm going to go there until, until, you know, until I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I moved to Pirates, uh, that three seasons there, and, I'm, and, and I had a conversation yesterday with, uh, with Munib and them. And I said to them, at age 22, 23, 24, for me to do those things, I could, only have, I could have only have dreamt of winning three league titles because the amount of experience yep. and the amount of confidence mm -hmm. and the amount of learning that has happened there, I can now go to Pirates and go and... Uh, I played my first... We played our first MTNA uh, final, sw Swallows. Yeah. We're leading 1-0. I love play, playing against Swallows yeah. uh, when I was at Supersport. I used to score against them. I think they were my favourite team. <laughs> if I go back into the archives <laughs> yes, now yes. at Supersport... If I look at, at against which teams I scored the most goals, it was Morocco Swallows. Yeah. They were my favorite team. Why is I was like, I don't know. I just kind of like playing against them. Yeah. I always scored against yeah. them. I, every time I Swallows, I, ah, I score. <laughs> and every time the next time, ah, I, ah, Swallows, ah, I can't, <laughs> wait, <laughs> I can't wait to play. <laughs> can't wait to play against Swallows. I'm going to score. And we always used to beat them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we hardly ever, I hardly ever lost against them. Mm. You know, and it was just a nice team to play against. For yeah, me personally, yeah. it was a nice... And I was like, ah, MTN8 final, Swallows, ah, Anthony my daily Ma bread. Mm. <laughs> Anthony Martial like, with Everton. Yeah. And yeah. guess where, yeah. when he's coming back from injury? Everton. This week, <laughs> <laughs> leading no. up to Everton. <laughs> you're mentally, you're, you're, yeah. Yeah. you have a strong mentality. Over there. You're like, ah, oh, this guy's, ah, I'm going to beat him. Yeah. You know, you go into that with him. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we play the final and, uh, and we lead 1-0. And we, they score the equalizer 86 minutes, 85, 86 minutes. And I see everybody, I look around, I'm like, ah, these guys, they, their heads drop. I know this team, they score, we can go score now. Mm. This is the perfect time not to go score again, yeah. because winning cups is not easy. Mm. And these type of things happen. But why is this players, the mentality is just like, They've already the final lost. whistle. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm like, ah, oh, guys, but there's you now 30 minutes to go. Mm. We can still win this game. Actually, I want to win this game in extra time. I don't even want to go to penalties. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, I'm like... And I just went in the huddle and I'm like, guys, no, man. Yeah. There's no way you can be like this. I said, hey, we have to wake up. We, we, gotta, we, we still got to play. Yeah. Just, because we, we, just because we thought for 80 minutes we won zero, mm. didn't mean the game was finished. Yes. They equalized. We didn't play against nobody. Of course, they want to equalize. They yes. equalized. We couldn't get a second goal. But now we really need to. And that was, my, that was my conversation with them. That was my encouragement to them. Guys, we really need to go now. These people that's here are not here for Swallows. No. They're here for us. Yes. And we're going to do it no matter how we're going to do it, yes. whether it be now or whether it be the penalty shoot. But let's be ready mentally yeah. for both. And the penalty shootout comes, let's be ahead of them. Yes. You know, and that was the, the happy. I went to happy. I went to Lucky Lahuate. I went to, I said, guys, no, man, mm. come. You know, that's where. That's leadership. Yes. Mm. You know, leadership doesn't have to be you wearing the armband. Yeah. Leadership is yeah, when yeah. things is not yeah. going well. And it, I could see, I could sense, I, I come from winning. Yeah. I know how to deal with this. Yeah. yeah. Come, guys. Yeah. This thing happens in, for, for, in champions. Yeah. You got to do it the hard way. Yes. We would have loved to one zero and bang, bye bye. And that's Came it. over ninety yeah. minutes, but that's not how life works. Yeah. That's not how the game works. Yeah. I, I'm really fascinated to just go back quickly to that transition from Pizzo Masamane to Coach Kevin, yeah. and because. When I remember the stories back then, people didn't give Coach Gavin his dues. Yeah. Because they said, 
the work was done for him and then all he had to do is take a, a, a Saad that was being ready made to, to, yeah ready made side and make them win but you've just mentioned something important there you guys had to go away yeah. and literally maybe unlearn some unlearn, some yeah, some yeah. some, some yeah. few things and yeah. actually start taking up to his philosophy his yeah. methods Correct. and and then you ended up winning i mean talk us through about him in that phase and the importance i mean of of what he had to do to obviously win you guys over you mentioned obviously the camp but how did you met when you over to obviously have the success that you guys ended up having yeah i think you know for for coach, for coach gavin and as well at that time of his career um he's really developed as a coach as well mm. you know we speak about player development and we speak about coaching development mm. and i think at that point in time he was coaching swallows before he joined uh, super sport yeah and he was doing really well with Swallows. He took Swallows from being a relegation candidate mm. all the time to being in the respectable top eight yep. position, getting close to to the top to the top half of the league yes. all the time, you know. And uh, his progression uh, obviously is there for a reason. And maybe at that time I didn't understand it, but mm. speaking to you guys now, I can I can really uh, See analyze it, it yeah. and, and speak about it in a way that that was necessary for him yeah. for his progression as a coach. Yeah, Super Sport was the right place for him to come to, mm. you know. And Cospizzo has then moved on to Bafana. Mm. And, and and the one thing that I've learned from Cospizzo Mosiman is when you get into an environment, when the day you leave there, that environment must be a better place. Yes, you got to leave that place in in a better place. So when someone else comes in, he doesn't have to fix things too much. Yes, all he has to do is enhance it. Yeah, mm. and because Gavin Hunt came in and he, and he enhanced us mm. for the amount of talent that we have and the amount of players there was the quality there was the Kevin knew how to 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 work to work with that yeah. and enhance that to, to to turn them into champions you know so so that was the biggest thing for me is that <coughs> number one I would love to be like Ospizzo Mosimani where everywhere I go when yeah. I leave I leave mm. it in a, he yeah. left sundowns in a very very good space yes. how we found sundowns yeah. is not how we left yes. sundowns yes. you know uh, so so that in itself says a lot about Ospizzo yeah. but it doesn't take it doesn't take Coach Gavin Hunt's work he's, he did in that three years then to make us win three years. It doesn't take away that yeah. work. Mm. You know, there's still work still needed to be done. Yeah. Mm. And not everybody could can do that. Could do that, mm. yeah. You know, and I mean, to, uh, I can proudly say today that Coach Gavin Hunt has not won a league title without me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can brag about that. <laughs> you know, I can brag about that. You know, because when I went to Wurz, I ended up winning in a fourth four yeah. league title with him. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I can, so I uh, always joke about him. Yeah. You know, and said him, Coach, you actually, you've never won little. You so wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you are, you need me there. You, you have me the there. You, can, you are guaranteed a league title. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, no, no. But anyway, I think he, he did a lot of good work. Yeah. You know, massive respect for him. He took my game to the next level as yeah. well. Pizzo introduced me into the PSL, helped me with my career, turned me into a good player. Uh, my mentality, what to eat, what not to eat, how to do extra work, to jump, to spend time in on your career, and the 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 fundamentals <coughs> of my career and, and being a football player was instilled by Coach Pizzo yeah. Mosimani. Yeah. So but when, by the time Coach Gavin Hunt came there, Coach Gavin could then enhance That's that mm. yeah. and enhance me as a player. Mm. You know, he said to me, if you score 10 goals per season, we will win this league title. And when I did that, we won the league titles. Mm. You know, so myself, Palimbe, Elias Palimbe as well. Mm. Dominguez. 10 goals from there, you 10 goals from there. Gain Samuel in the middle there, Sandri. Brent Carlson here. Yeah. There's Saint Pochenpool here, Slomka yeah. Kana here, yeah. you know, Pagaka right wing, but Katlejo Masejo, yes. uh, Tecomodice left when Gavin just joined. Yeah. Um, actually, funny uh, uh, story, because Gavin never really wanted to let Teco go. You know, Teco wanted to go to, to, to Pirates, Pirates, obviously. Yeah. You know, and people, ah, Gavin didn't like him. Uh, mm. Gavin didn't even know him yet. Mm. He came there, he wanted to inherit the squad, and, yeah. you know, and... And, and people will say, yeah, but uh, Teko doesn't play Gavin type of football. football. Yeah. It's not about type of football. Yeah. It's a type of player you are and how do you fit yeah. into that Role formation system, system yeah, yeah. and whatever and how we want to score goals. You know, for, if you're doing something for three years and everybody knows what you're doing, surely they can stop you. Yes. Yeah. But now you are saying we play long balls or whatever they said. You know, we, we weren't playing long balls. We were just very efficient in what we <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. So if you know that we're playing long, why can't you stop us? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's just the amount of talent that we have and everybody knew his role yeah. and responsibility. Yeah. Uh, I was a winger. I know my job is to assist, is to score yeah. and is to help the team defend. Yes. Yes. That's the three things that never, ever goes out the window. Yeah. Every single game is three things. Dave, when you look back, um, that double treble at Pirates, uh, a lot of people say that 
has will always be entrenched in South African football history to for a club to do that yeah. back to back two seasons in a row win three titles six titles in two seasons that is is probably the epitome of of success for one club how much more different was Rude Kroll in mm. in that in that in that period and playing with guys like Benny uh, who had just come back from Europe uh, the amount of influence that he had uh, on 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 that squad, um, and you say that you know it's a funny story that you, Coach Gavin hasn't won a, a league title without you. Pirates haven't won a league title since you left. As well. <laughs> so, um, how how much more did that enhance your career, but also the individuals that were involved in that Coach Root Crawl from a coaching perspective? But also some of the players that you played with, Benny, um, mm. in in those seasons. How yeah. much of a role did they play in the success of Pirates during that se- those two seasons? No, when I got to Pirates in in 2010 after the World Cup, um, I, I I just I was the previous season. I was a I was a player of a season. Yes. So I come with with a lot of confidence in in <coughs> in, in my ability mm. into a big team like that. But but I knew that I'm going into a team that I read a lot of books, so I I, I kind of learn a lot yeah. as, as I go along, and, and and I found an interesting person at the club, Andy Lajali. Yes, uh, very arrogant on the field. Yes, but I love it arrogance on the field. Mm. But off the field, he's the nicest guy, you know. Uh, same with Benny. Yeah, off the field, nicest guy ever. Mm. The Benny you guys see on the field. <laughs> if you must sit in Benny's company and chill with him and whatever, you'll be so surprised. He's, yeah. he's the complete opposite, and and that's Andy Lajali as well. Yeah. So when I got there, I realized. I, I need to know. I know my team is from Super Sport. I yes. need to learn to 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 learn as quick as I can about individuals and yeah. the, and the their way, their ways because we all got different ways. Yeah. I've got I like different things and you know so I, I so I, I'd like to use I like to use Charlie because Charlie was the one player that people people expect I, like I, I would expect a player like this young. He yeah. came from Tux. Yeah, I would uh, now I come into environment and say, me, I'm a big player. Uh, you small yes. boy, you haven't I've done anything. One titles, you know. Mm. But I realized quickly, hey, this one here, I like him. You know, he's he's, he's of good. He's very very good. He's, he's got a good mindset. He's yeah. got a good mentality towards the game. He's a winner. Yeah. He doesn't like losing. Yeah. So me too. Mm. So that makes us equal now. Yeah. Mm. But how he behaves and how he acts doesn't mean I must act like that. And mm. I'm not gonna. Uh, now maybe the techos and the those ones, mm. maybe maybe different. Maybe thought a bit differently. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But I, that's how I thought. I thought of Jali as he's arrogant, but. He's just got good arrogance, yeah. and, and 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 we can use the positives. And if we put everybody together, we we can have success. Yeah, you know, and if we, all that individuals together as one, mm. working to one to, towards one common goal, with all the stuff we have, with all the intelligence, all the talent, and all that, we can make it work. So that's how I came into that environment. I didn't come into the environment. I was a player of the season. I won three league titles. They haven't won anything. I didn't come there and say, Ah, I'm coming here because I've won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I'm here to help. Yes, I'm here to help change it. And with the MTN8, that started. They won, and and I had a big role. I played a huge role. Yes, but Coach Crow was was fantastic because uh, when you arrive at a place and you know you want it. Yes. I, yeah. So I had that feeling. Yeah. And he gave me that feeling immediately. Yeah. yeah. He immediately gave gave me that feeling to say, Ah, this boy, I want him here. Mm. Uh, he's very very good. He knows me. Mm. You know and. And, and and I kind of liked the Dutch style by then. Mm. You know, I, I went, I was at Super Sport Academy, Feyenoord. I went to Feyenoord yeah. for, for an assessment. I spent uh, 10 days over there. So I know a little bit about the Dutch way and the Dutch way of doing mm. things. Mm. I escaped down was here. Yes. Uh, very, very, yes. Doing very, very, very well yeah. with development mm. and bringing players through. And Steven Pinar went there and Benny mm. McCarthy was mm. Amsterdam. So I, I think when I got to Pirates, it was... Also a dream for me, because uh, I support. I, I mm. grew up supporting Pirates. I grew up so, so, so watching the derby, mm. Jerry Fasana, uh, Andre Sabola, yeah. you know. So Villagazi. So Villagazi, mm. you know. So Villagazi. Actually, when I was at Supersport, we actually played against them at Supersport. I was playing with Tim Bam Guni them in two thousand and four, yes. yeah. two thousand and five, when I just got on the scene my first season. They were leading us three one. Steve Lecolier was still playing. Yes. Mm. Kifle Remy, Lebang uh, Mukwena. Yes. We beat them four three. I think at the last free kick, I took the last free kick and Tembam Guni scored a header. Yeah. We beat them 4-3, we stopped them and they ended up losing the league. 
So, so getting there and all the memories coming back and yeah. playing in spite of a super sport. I've beaten Pirates so many times by playing for super sport because super sport was a hoodoo for most of the big teams. <laughs> yes. When you come sundowns, sundowns had no sundowns. I was telling the players out there we lost six one and La Masia lost six yes. one down yes. there and whatever. I was saying, you know what? I've never lost. I lost against Sundowns, yes. but I've beaten Sundowns more, more than what times, I've lost yeah. against. <laughs> you know, at one we beat them 4 0, yeah. at Vets I beat them 3 0, and mm. I mean beating Sundowns convincingly. Yes. Yes. Because of the mentality and because mm. of the teams I was playing for. Mm. Yeah. I had the mentality to compete on that level. And ever since I've retired, Sundowns have not stopped winning the league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you guys. It's a lot of, a lot of to be honest with you guys, they've not stopped. <laughs> they've not stopped winning the league. I posted the other day on Twitter, I said, uh, I found a picture of uh, us taking a selfie on the on the podium with Vitz winning the league. Yeah. And I'm like, that's actually the last time anybody else won the league. Mm. This team in mm. 2016, 17. 17 season mm. was the last time any other Someone team, else. Someone else has won the league and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. You know, so... But but Pirates was my everything just went up my mm. followers on Twitter. Submenu, <laughs> <laughs> so you are in the this contract <laughs> was topped when you, up. When you get to the when you get to the garage, you, when you get to the garage, and you can go to whatever village. All of a sudden, everybody knows yeah. you. Yeah. you know, that's just the magnitude of a, of, of a club like Orlando Pirates, and and um, I really enjoyed myself. You know, nothing better than ever, actually um, winning trophies yeah. at the club that you grew up supporting and. And they haven't won anything and all of a sudden you come there and everything just makes sense you know it's not me alone i think like you guys said penny it. came in the yeah. next season we won the treble the first year the second season penny came in penny and sanguini came in the second yeah. year i mean if you're going to enhance a team like that mm. you know, that's all about enhancing the team and, and staying on that level so the type of signings that was made by the club was but everything complemented just, everything just complemented yeah. Yeah. each other you know, and, and that's why we were able to, to win the six trophies in a row. Mm. You know, we even lost the Telcom <coughs> final. Yes. Uh, then we came the next year, we went to Champions League final, lost that final. Yeah, MTN yeah, final, yeah. lost against Platinum Stars. Yeah. Telcom final, lost against Platinum Stars. Went to the Nedbank final, ended up winning that final. Yes. Out of five finals, we won one final <laughs> in one season, but we've won trophies before. Mm. So part of, part of winning is losing a lot as, yes. as well. You yes. know, but just make sure that you win more <laughs> yeah. than you yeah. what you've lost. So yeah. I can say I've probably won nine cup finals. But then I can say I've lost seven cup finals. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. So balance is out. So it balances out, yeah. you know. Just make sure that, you know, you don't lose more than what you win. Yeah. Uh, that's that's ultimately what the mindset should always be. Uh, but I think with Pirates it was really everything just went for the four and a half years that I was there, obviously going back to Super Sport for six months. Uh, you know, for the, it was just, everything was just fitting. Yeah. You know, and I really enjoyed my time. And outside of the trophies, I mean, we always talk about, I mean, that's the, I guess, the pinnacle of all the hard work that you've done behind the scene. We get to see the trophies, the medals. What is an, a standout moment for you um, in those four and a half years at, at Pirates? I mean, obviously, it's a big club and probably every player in South Africa either wants mm. to be Pirates, Chiefs, yeah. and obviously now Sundowns is yeah. one of the, what is What stands out for you in I those think, four I think what stands out is the fact that by then, when I was at Supersport, I had my first born in 2009, my second last season at Supersport. So he was obviously born in 2009 and then I had uh, that was Zach and <coughs> Alex got born in 2011. Mm. Uh, so at Pirates, when you were winning all those trebles with Benny, those, they started walking. Mm. And it was nice to have them on the field after mm. every match. After every home match at Orlando, I would mm. be on the field with them, kick mm. ball with them, and just just uh, kind of spend time with them. That's my time with them. And yeah. I think that for me, uh, if I look back at the pictures now, that's the biggest thing mm. for me is that I was able to do that after every match. Just go on the field there as little as they were. And they would see videos. There was even one... Of the one of the adverts on Supersport, yeah. with, you know, uh, little pirates, mm. where he's but where Zachary is kicking, <coughs> and we have we have the videos in the archives and whatever, yeah. and we show them these type of yeah. things, and now they both they both becoming teenagers, yeah. so we go back to that and we show them, hey, this is how you grew up, yeah, this is yeah. what we, so that for me is is absolutely priceless, yeah. you know, I don't think anybody can buy uh, something like that where your son, he, they will probably speak about it forever. Mm. You know, when, uh, if, if they become successful one day in whatever they want to do one day, yep. I, would, I, would, I would assume that those are the things that they will speak about. Mm. You know, yeah. because those are defining moments. And for me, being able to take them out there and showing them, even at, when I was at Vitz, they were a little bit older, winning the league title, winning the MTN8, winning the Telcom knockout, and having them there, <coughs> having them touch the trophy, having mm. them be in the change room with the guys, the camaraderie, just, you know, that for me, as a father, 
is priceless to give to your sons, is, is yeah. to give the experiences that you're living, yeah. yes. to have them here next to you and say, hey boy, this is what I'm living at the moment, yeah. and this is what the experience is about. Yeah. Um, soccer derby, um, Soweto derby, um, I think it is this weekend, yep. and you four and a half years, <laughs> you've played it quite a few. Yeah. Um, talk us, I mean, as, I mean, I, I think the last one that I went to, um, I think, yeah, it was Benny, I think, scoring one. Pirates winning. That was the last time I went to. That was, you were still a player. Yeah, probably three, probably the three, when yeah, Benny three, scored two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early goals. Yes. Yeah. That was the last one I went to. Talk us about what it, I mean, how it feels to be part of such a, <laughs> an event in South African yeah. football. Yeah. To be honest with you guys, the league, the week uh, leading up to it, it becomes very annoying. <laughs> because as a player, now everything is like different. Build up, build up. Why is it so different? <laughs> you know, can you just let us be and just yeah. treat it as, maybe Friday you can come and make it all this hype and you know. So that used to annoy me a lot, uh, the week leading up to it, because the work needs to be put in the amount of, but everything is just chaos. It's mm-hmm. just there's press conferences, this, it's the media, it's phone calls, ah, oh, can you do this interview, can you do this, can you do this, but, but it's a spectacle and, and, and it's an event, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic event and to be part of it, you know, once that whistle goes, then it's really, mm. you know, when you're on that bus and you're driving to the stadium, then it really eats you like, right, now it's the derby, yeah. now it's no more cameras, there's no more this, mm. there's no more that, it's yeah. actually about the match yeah. now, yeah. you know, and that feeling is the feeling that you really want, you know, so, but I think, you know, for the most part, when I, when I say I score the own goal, I would, I would have never thought I would have done that. But I think as we went along, it was one, I was on the line, it was a corner, Majora took a shot, I was on the line, I cleared the ball off the line. Yeah. And I could hear, just the Pirates, it's going like, oh, that was a crucial moment. Yeah. Like, that ball could have gone in, but he was there, he yeah. cleared it. You know, so already I said to myself, I was like, ah, oh, one, one, at least. Yeah. Own goal now. <laughs> at least I've stopped one, you know. I've saved Sen- <laughs> Senzo one. And since that time, Senzo didn't want to, Senzo said to me, uh, every time he said to me, you, hi, coach, he must be there. Uh, corners. Last, last yeah, I want him here close to me yeah. uh, because he knows where he can see. Yeah. The ball is in, the ball goes past me. He's there, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, so that happened, and then obviously I scored the free kick, yeah. uh, and then it was two one. Yeah. So I ended up doing more good than bad. Yeah. Yeah. So the one own goal, yes, it was not a not a nice moment, but at the same time it taught me a lot, and it, it, it was two it's a defining moment. Two things can happen. It's either you go down and and, and you mm. kill yourself mentally. Yeah. Or you say, you know what, that happened, it's over. You know what, when I was 14 years old, actually, by the way, that was yeah. more difficult, so yeah. I can get over this. Yeah. You know, and, then, and, then, and, and, and that's when I say I use, that's an example of when I used, when I, when I left for the School of Excellence, yeah. and how it helps me, that first difficulty, or how it helps me in my career yeah. now going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Dane, I don't, it's the interest of time as well, because I know you, you're a very busy man and you have to report for training at La Masia, uh, but in closing, you mentioned Senzo um, he, he was an integral part of your career as well, yep. you know, playing with him, teammate. Yep. Um, just your memories of playing with, uh, with, with Senzo and, and, and the kind of, of team that you guys and then the environment that you guys at Paris we spend had. We spend a lot of time doing free kicks, extra work after mm-hmm. training. A lot, a lot. That free kicks, uh, when I score free kicks, it's not just about me scoring the free kick. It's actually about oh, the amount of work mm. that has gone into that. You know, and you'll see in, in that derby where I scored the free kick, I ran straight to Brighton. Brighton was on the bench mm. because we spent so much time with the angles and, and where he must stand. Because sometimes the keeper stands in, in the far corner and he puts the wall there. It's mm. easy for me. Yeah, it's just All I'm doing, I'm going to clip it over, over the wall. Yeah. It's going to be a goal. Mm. So with training, I used to say to him, stand in the middle. And make it really difficult for me. Mm. I have to if you make it really difficult, I have to eat an inch perfect to score yes. against you. And they would save 9, 10, 12 balls they'll save, but the one is going to be that accurate and going to go in. in the, you won't get it. Yeah. Even if he stands there, you mm. won't get it. That's mm. how accurate, that's the amount of attention to detail we used to work on, you know, the angles. For me, I always say to anybody that takes a free kick, for example, I'll always say, look where the keeper stands first. Yes. Before you decide so that the free kick is here, I'm going to kick it there. Yeah. See where the keeper stands. Now if you see the keeper, now you, you test the angle. You say, okay, if I eat it there, okay, this keeper normally he likes moving this way first. So yeah. he thinks I'm going to put it here because I'm used to putting it here over the mm. side. What I'm going to do here now, I'm going to put it that way. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put two players over there to block Blood his spots. view. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And then he's going to anticipate the ball going there, but the ball is going to go that side. Yeah. You know, so... 
So it's, it's, it's a lot of thinking. Free kicks going there and putting the ball down, it's just not kicking it. Mm. Of course, uh, repetition is important. Like <coughs> yesterday, is one of the, the guys that looks after the balls at La Marcia, I was doing free kicks. And I kicked it. He came, he came past me and he says, Yo, in Afrikaans, he's in Afrikaans, I can no it weg. You say that, that will never go away. Yeah. You know, I'm like, it will never go away because of the amount of times I've done the yeah. memory, the muscles, everything yeah. is it's still there because of how many times if you play cricket, for example, yeah. or in any sport, yeah. cricket, if you f- focus on your batting, you're not going to get you out. Yeah. Mm. You know, because you, how, no matter how you, you can bowl me here, you can bowl me there, you can bowl me wherever, I'm going to play it mm. because I practice. Mm. Every single thing I practice, you know, and and that was that and that was working with Sinzo on that level and the goalkeepers at Pirates with Maniba as well, mm. you know, it's, it's about perfecting our craft, mm. you know, and those moments, uh, the team's training is never enough. Yes, it's never ever enough. The team's training, you got to take it upon yourself uh, to have that moment in you to say, when this moment arrives, that freaky comes there, I want to make the difference, and yeah. and, and I will do hundred times your training. To for, for, for that one time in the game for it to succeed. Yeah. Mm. I've got to do it 100 times yet, training. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Any more notes? No. Um, I, would love him, I would love him to give him a, a prediction. Yeah, yeah. That be prediction. That be prediction. <laughs> Don't play down, leave it out. Yeah, please. Yeah. Because there's two V1. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell you guys, I tell you guys how I feel <laughs> and how I experience the derby. Yes. Yeah. Every time Pirates is doing well. Yeah. Chiefs wins. <laughs> Every time Chiefs thinks they're doing well, Pirates is not doing well. You've answered, Pirates but not answered it. I like yeah. that. So <laughs> I, think, I think everybody, I would love for Pirates to win. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Uh, Pirates must win. Yes. I am Pirates supporter. Yeah. Yeah. Pirates, I, would want, I want Pirates to win. But how it has worked always is like everybody you will say, now, ah, Pirates is on better form than Chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs is struggling. Oh. And then it ends up. It always ended up being the one that's struggling yes. coming yeah, out of the, of, the, yeah. of the derby. But yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, what the predictions is, but that is from inside info from how I felt yeah. back then and how I experienced it. And even till this day, mm. still, it still works like that. Mm. Pirates does well, Chiefs ends up winning the derby mm. before the derby. Mm. And then Pirates is doing well, Pirates is winning the MTN, Chiefs wins. And, and, and you always say like, People, I mean, form is not something that you always look use at. or look at when it comes to, to the derby. The derby. The derby. Yeah, form goes out because the there's pride at stake. I a mean, lot of pride, a lot of it's how you wake up in the morning, yeah. how well it's how well you slept last night, <laughs> uh, how you are waking up this morning. Because I mean, the adrenaline and your mindset yeah. and everything it's your mind races, you know, and it's just it's a lot. And you get into the stadium and it's ninety thousand people, yeah. and then you go and score an own goal. In, in <laughs> 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 what were your derby preps or what did you do like the the, the, the day before a derby what did you do no I didn't do anything different. you fold your we clothes normally, yeah. no we normally camp um, at the Wanderers Hotel yeah. you just there and you try and you try you gotta you gotta play the game before it actually plays yeah. so in your mind you gotta play the game if I'm if I get the ball if I'm in a situation in the wide area am I, gonna, I need to look up I need to put the ball into a good area mm. You know, you, you, you think the yeah, game, you yeah. start thinking the yeah. vision, the vision yeah. of the game. I mean, as a, as a, as a sports person, you would know mm. before you go into bat, as yep. you, as you're sitting there, you're watching the bowler, mm. he's bowling and whatever, and you think to yourself, ah, oh, he bowls, okay, right, when the ball pitches there, it comes like this. Yeah. You know, so you try and analyze and you try and visualize mm. and you try and play the game before the actual moments that is going to yeah, come. Happen, yeah. And sometimes those moments actually arrive and I'm like, ah, oh, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you walk on the field and you say to yourself, if I get the ball now, what am I going to do? Yeah. And then the ball comes, here the ball comes, and and I already decided I'm going to do this. And I do that, and it comes off, and it ends up being an assist, or Mm. ends up being a chance created, or whatever. And and, and that's what it's about. It's just your mindset where you are. You know, you try and switch off as much as you can, obviously, but you can't, there's no way uh, Pirates Chiefs game, you you switch off. Your mind (laughs) races. Even when you're sleeping there, it's... When you close your eyes, you can hear the Vuvuzelas go. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, Dane Clay, yeah. thank you so nah, much for you your guys. time. Thank really you. appreciate yeah. it. Um, all the best with your coaching career. I know yeah. it's, uh, it's something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. La Masia, uh, hopefully you can guide La Masia into the premiership. No, that's, thank you. Thank that's you. something yeah, that's, that's, that we wish for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good ambition. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, it's something that we, we're, we're all here going to look out for and rooting for you to be able to achieve that. I mean, it's something that you spoke about so passionately about development and making sure that you 
bring people to their highest level and i think that's uh, a very admirable thing uh, to have thank you so much thank, thank you Clay. thank you, thank you, you nons so thank, no, you, no, Lunga. thank, you, thank you Sia. thank you Smo. thank you uh, and that's it yeah it's a, it's a fantastic fantastic episode please like please subscribe um we've got a little giveaway that we're gonna do uh in a little bit but we just wanted to 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 thank dane and and let him uh, be on his way so that he get can can get to training but please don't forget to like subscribe um comment whoever you want to see sitting next to us here in this middle seat please mention them on 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 the comments and we'll try our best to get them uh, uh onto the onto the show as best as possible thank you very much thank and you. we'll see you next time <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.